We're here in Sestriere to go behind the scenes with Emil ahead of the big one this summer. Firstly, Emil, who is Emil Kores? Uh, I'm a runner. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah, probably not. No, yeah, that is the thing. He's my, he's my. Are you fit? Yeah, I mean, I feel like building fans. Probably not, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, probably not. Do you want them tonight for tomorrow? Eh, go on. What a blast, eh? Your blast, you know, you know, that means it'll come for like 10 minutes. You know, exactly. It's the, uh, <laughs> One word I think describes Emil is authentic. I think Emil is a like total, what you see is what you get. If he rarely puts an airs and graces, he's just like he is. That sort of sums up Emil, up Emil really, really well. Describe him in one word. Relentless. Expand on that. Relentless um, in what way? Everything Emil does is to produce better performances at his running. Absolutely everything. Every decision he makes, Every thought he has, is every action he takes, is to be a better runner. What's he like to work with him? Well, we probably have very different opinions on this. He's not perfect. No. He must be frustrating. No, there's times, <laughs> What's yeah. his worst habits? Um, I won't be too mean. Early on, I probably managed a meal <clears throat> on day-to-day -day operations and communication, and when Luke came in, he, um, he happily took over that. I, <laughs> I, um... <laughs> punctuality isn't one of um, his strengths. Punctuality. He is hopeless. Maybe reply, that type of thing. So right. um, if, if you message him, yeah, so communication. I have a lot of frustration with Emil with communication and uh, trying to get hold of him. Easily, 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 easily. His meal's worst habit is his timekeeping. Yeah, there's definitely been times at home when we've been training together when I thought, like, his actions are what you would do if you didn't want to train with someone. Like, <laughs> be like yeah, just don't reply until like the, the yeah. like an hour before the session, or or um, yeah, just turn up a little bit late and stuff. When he was younger, getting him ready to get to races and things, you know, lastminute.com. London Marathon's a good example where he'll be the last man on the bus. I remember times like Mother's Day, you know, not organised. I'd be taking up a special day today, Emil. Yeah, I know, Mum. I know. And I'd be thinking, you know, have I got anything? He just understands what he's there to do, understands his own routine, and sometimes <laughs> that might cause me more pressure than him <laughs> with timekeeping. Really late at night, he'd come back after going to the co-op just before it shut. Two years running, I had Get Well Soon cards with Get Well Soon crossed out and Happy Mother's Day because he got there so late and they'd sold out. When he comes back from his run, he like kicks his trainers off and obviously he goes on some quite muddy routes and then they stay there for like years <laughs> without being like cleaned or anything. In fact, they started to venture out when we used to live in a flat outside of the flat and a few of the neighbours did make a few comments. <laughs> so he'd been upsetting the neighbours with his trainers, with the amount uh, of trainers he'd been having? I think they're used to it and I think they quite like him so he gets away with it. <laughs> He's very laid back, some would say horizontal, very chilled out, like he'd ideally like to just chill out at home and do nothing, whereas I'm definitely the opposite. So sometimes I think like it doesn't really match up like being a really dedicated athlete, but then also like being quite lazy sometimes. <laughs> what is something that people won't know about a meal that might surprise them? He's got an absolutely amazing memory, photographic memory. He knows 
facts and figures of all the football players, all the runners, and when he was little, all the Pokemon. <laughs> Something that maybe people wouldn't expect is he quite likes Pokemon. Yeah, amazing memory, which means he's done very well in his exams without having to revise. Um, one of his favourite films is Dirty Dancing. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I love that. I think he might not be happy with me revealing that. <laughs> He's an amazing dancer, fantastic dancer. But not only is he a top marathon runner, he is an amazing dancer. He really is, I mean, yeah, he is, he is. So when he was a child, when he was a child, because I love music, I always have music on at home. So I used to dance, and Emilia danced. And I used to say to him, Emilia, you're a good, you're a really good dancer. He was like, no, I'm not. I said, Emilia, you are. And he said he hasn't been out clubbing much because of his running, but apparently when he's been in clubs, like people, like he's had a crowd around him watching him, and he loves music. Emilia loves like R&B, soul, reggae, hip hop, rap, you know. Yeah, it's always just that, that kind of reminder that actually we're full-time athletes. Mm. Like we are here to train. Yeah. Like so, if the session takes three hours or it takes four hours, it, it doesn't really matter. Like we're, we're just here to get the most out of ourselves, um, and he kind of brings that attitude. So I'm here with one of the most decorated endurance coaches in the world, and he's currently coaching Britain's prize marathon runner Emil Caress. Renato Canova, we want to get to know Emil, go behind the scenes a little bit, get to know his personality. So firstly, this might be hard for you, Canova, describe him in one word. The guy uh, I like very much because he's very serious, he's uh, one uh, uh, following uh, discipline very much. When uh, I look for an athlete, uh, the first step is to see how he is like person. Uh, after, there is uh, something else, the talent, uh, because the talent uh, without uh, the right uh, discipline is something like this doesn't produce anything. So has he always been like that? Ever since you first met Emil on that, that road in Kenya, that famous road in Kenya, has he always had that attitude or has that changed and matured over the years? But the first thing is uh, that it was uh, really funny the first time that I met him. We are in uh, Moiben, uh, Adidas, arrived with a new, new type of shoes. And they wanted that all the athletes, Adidas contractor could uh, test, could mm. check the shoes. I saw in the group of athletes that I knew, one athlete that I didn't know more at all, uh, coming to me, telling, ah, Renato, I need, uh, nice to meet you. I didn't know who was, <laughs> no. So I started to ask, what are you doing? And he told me, I'm here for training, okay. Of course, I understand, but what are you doing, like event? 10K, 10 kilometers, uh, and which is your best? Ah, I had a 29, 43, two years ago, something like this. Now, now it's very much better because I ran 27, 44, the last race was in Valencia. No. And I told him, ah, congratulations, in two years uh, to move to 29, 40 to 27, 44. Congratulations for you and for your coach. Who is your coach? And he told me, you. <laughs> so I told him, it's the, it's the first case that I am coach of somebody without knowing. <laughs> Where do you think Emil gets his competitiveness from? Um, definitely his mum. I learned that quite quickly. In our family, we're all, all sporty, all competitive, you know whether it's snakes and ladders, you know, my sister and I, when we were younger, we'd fight over frustration, fight over Cluedo. So yeah, really competitive family. And even now at Christmas, we, we always play categories and, you know, we can nearly come to blows now. I went round for tea and then they wanted to like play some board games and it was quite horrifying, really. <laughs> In a nice way, just very competitive. <laughs> but, but also, I think when, when he was young, I used to sort of like, when he, was, when he was at nursery, I used to sort of be aware that I didn't want him to just to be in nursery all day and then come home and not get any fresh air. So I used to make him walk, I used to walk to nursery myself and make him walk home and he used to be like, oh no, mummy, can we? And he'd say, no, Emil, you're going to walk home, we're walking. And then, then I used to say, and he was like, really reluctant. And I said, Emil, Emil, let's see who can get to that lamppost first. And he'd be like, oh. <laughs> and I used to do it, I used to do this, and then we get there, I, I won. And then I said, oh, Emil, but who can get to the letterbox? You know, 
And they used to do this like nearly every day, you know, and he, and he loved it, absolutely loved it. So I think that might have sort of fostered his competitive spirit somewhere along the way. <laughs> I spend time with him and I feel like a hobby jogger. And not that there's anything wrong with being a hobby jogger, I just feel like like the, the level of dedication that he's got, like it, it just, if he's at 100, I, I'm at 50. And I feel like I'm a pretty dedicated guy and I run a lot and yeah, this is, this is my life, this is my identity and everything, but he just takes it to a different stratosphere. <laughs> Talk about you boys relationships because you've known him for quite a while now been around him through his kind of meteoric progression um over the years so what, what's it been like and when did you first kind of link up with him and become friends i guess yeah i couldn't say exactly um maybe a couple of years before covid when emil finished at saint mary's university he came back to leeds um was kind of decided that that's where he's going to base himself we started linking in kind of training sessions together our race results were like relatively similar at the time. He was younger and I think my running age was a little bit less than my actual age. Um, so our kind of trajectories were pretty similar and then his has gone like that. And yeah, mine's slightly better, just not quite at the same kind of gradient that his has been going. You know, what, what's he like to be around on camp? Emil's great on camp, yeah. He, every decision we make is, is to be faster, mm -hmm. to be better. Uh, so that's like a really good thing to be reminded of all the time. Sometimes when I'm at home for a little bit too long and, and I'm deciding, yeah, I get comfortable, you might get a little bit complacent. And my partner even says to me, like, I, you need to go on that camp if I'm deliberating whether to do it, because she knows that if I spend time with a meal, like my level of kind of discipline just goes up and up and up and I get a lot more out of myself. <laughs> You guys have seen his stock, if you like, increase more than anybody over the, over the last few years. Has he changed? Not at all. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say anything remotely. I think he's probably become more relaxed in a sense. We needed to, to find the, the right mentality, you know? And it was okay under this point of view. And he asked me, we had an appointment for coming uh, to meet me in uh, where I stay. You can arrive to produce good results maybe with a different um, type of training, but not with the confusion between one type of training and the other type of training. So jumping, no? Mm -hmm. uh, some time long, now I am not happy because I need the speed, I go in another group of, for speed right. and I lose. Uh, no, we need the project, like and everything. He, he understood that straight immediately, away. Immediately, understood. Right. When you have athletes like this, uh, you can be confident that they follow and especially, more, very important for a coach, they are also able to give a, a feedback of a, their feeling. I think we could probably write so many case studies where he's had a long-term goal, locked in for a, a, a long period of time with the process and just in reflection, we've always gone, 
he's, he's gone and executed exactly what he said he's going to do. And this mentality, he had a long-term approach, which is your kind of philosophy as well. Yeah, also this, but especially was also um, how he organised his life, uh, yeah. something like this, no? So, um, he's not obsessed uh, by athletic and by the performance, but he's professional, very much. He had, was already one having the idea to have a project. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is like this. Ah, è un ottimo lavoro, veramente. Ah, non ho visto. 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 Ah, non No, we can't get the car. Oh, uh, yeah. you, you wanted to go running? No, no, ah, yeah. no. <laughs> no, no, no. Good yeah. session, good training. Yeah. Going forward, what's keeping him attacking his goals? What's driving him, do you think? He has an advantage. The motivation is not for tomorrow. The motivation is for his career. He has the idea that there are steps for this. We discuss also together about the, the, the goals you know, for the career. Speaking about marathon, of course, the first goal, the first target, chronometrically speaking, is to cancel the record of Mofala in marathon. Not because it's Mofala, because it's the record is a record, no, practically. I think that in the old interview, he also told that his dreams, dream was to, to arrive to have the, all the records of UK in the road. Road records, everything, including 10K. For example, he's not happy about the half marathon, no? He's not happy about the half marathon because we know that could run very much faster. But he's not happy for a, not for the time, really, for a particular. He liked to have a 59 in front. 59-59. It's the 601 is exactly the same thing, <laughs> but it's not the same thing. Every athlete has uh, some type of uh, particular goal looking at the time. And finally then, you talk about the long-term approach. What's the level can this man get to? Yeah, I, oh, it's a really good question, really. I won't want to find any limiting factor on him, I think. To be a world-class distance runner, you've got to be able to do the volume training he's doing for years of consistency. It's great to be able to be alongside him, see him go from where he was as a young athlete and come through and you, know, you, you watch when he won the silver medal at the European Cross a couple of years back in Turin actually, um, not far from here, and the way he took it to Jakob and he didn't care about the name that was running alongside him, it was how do I get the best out of myself today, and so where can he go, I wouldn't want to put a number on what he can run over the marathon. We're just in Emil's world trying to help him navigate in an actual um, and it's, yeah. it's a privilege really. He can, he can run incredibly quick, but I also think he can win incredible races and do incredible things in, in the sport generally and, and just have a big impact across British distance running. How do you think he'll do? Yeah, I don't want like kind of bookies to kind of short the odds or anything, <laughs> but um, yeah, honestly, I, I, there's nothing that he could do there that would actually surprise me, I'll be really honest. Like he's, he's in really good shape, he's really determined and yeah, he, he could really go well there.